Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife review for you. Today, we have my full review of the Demco AD 20.5. Definitely one of the most anticipated knives of 2021. And one of the reasons why I'm reviewing this is they did just sell in person their first few at Blade Show this past weekend. I'm recording this on the 9th of June, 2021. And also, some dealers took a handful back. They were up on the sites. They're gone again. So some of you actually have your hands on these. And as the month goes on, they are going to be popping up at dealers. This first run of them is going to be slightly limited, but not really that limited. And then later in the in the summer, there will be a lot more. So I thought now is a good time to do this. I've had them for about a month. I've been carrying this one, the Shark's Foot Blade, as they call it, this clip point one. I've not been carrying because... That is going to be one that I give away to you guys in the 25,000 sub giveaway. So I'm going to do a full review mostly focusing on the Shark's Foot version. But uh, if you do want to buy one, keep out, keep your eye out at the uh, your favorite Demco dealer. One of them is KnifeJoy down below. You click on that link down below and I get a little kickback. So you got to use that link. But if you use that link, I get a little kickback. It does help out the channel a whole lot. And KnifeJoy is a great place to deal with. So uh, let's we'll just use the... I don't, want to, I don't want to ding up the one that I'm giving away. So I'm just going to use the shark's foot for most of this. But yeah, so I think you guys kind of know a lot about this if you've been watching. It's a very anticipated knife. Three-inch blade instead of the larger from the 80-20. And with grivery scales, it's made in Taiwan instead of being made in America. Aus 10A steel, which we'll be talking about a lot because I see a lot of comments. People say, I don't want it. It's Aus 10. It is $150. bucks. we will talk about whether or not it's worth that. Uh, the very unique shark lock is the kind of you know, party trick of this knife. You just pull this back, drops right shut. You can thumb flick it. You can spidey flick it. You can use the hole. You can use the thumb stud, all kinds of stuff. It is super fidgety and just a really fun knife to play with. And it makes really cool noises. It has a very kind of, you know, tough look to it. Compare it to the 8020 here really quick. So this is the American made 8020. So this is my little pairing. Um, part of the reason why I chose the Shark's Foot one to keep was because it's different than that. I have the clip point on the uh, on the 8020, as you can see. So it is significantly smaller, not only in this dimension, but also dramatically, I think even more so, in the thickness. It is a very slim knife that is uh, very, very comfortable in the pocket that way, which we'll talk more about. But uh, yeah, very slim knife, much slimmer blade stock, much slimmer handles, but they both have that same really cool you know, shark block. They do the same cool things. They make the same cool noises. Uh, pretty awesome that it's coming out at 150 bucks. In my previous video, I when I did the unboxing, they weren't sure on the price yet. They didn't know what import fees and stuff were going to be. And I guess between 120 and 140, that was their guess. It turned out to be a little bit higher, but not dramatically so, at 149.99. Let's do some specs and some size comparisons here. You have a blade length of three inches, overall length of 7.4 inches, Blade stock, like I said, uh, much thinner at 0.125 inches and a very, very slim handle thickness of just 0.38 inches. Weight of 3.54 ounces for either version. They both weighed exactly the same. Um, that's a li like a little bit over that, you know, ounce per inch thing, but uh, not enough to really matter. And that's just kind of something that people talk about anyway. Uh, size comparisons, let's bring out your Spyderco Para 3. And the paramilitary too. So you see much closer to that uh, that para three size, even just trying to line up the pivots here, even just maybe a little bit smaller than that. And your usual bench maids will grab the 940 and the full size bug out. So just a little bit shorter than either of those, a little bit bulkier than both. And lastly, some of the newer additions to the standards. Our Civivis will bring out the Backlash and the Elementum. You can see again, just a little bit bigger than an Elementum. So what has this knife been like to use? Uh, the blade, both of them, we'll bring them both back out for this. Uh, both of them are 
about the same thickness behind the edge, right about 27, 28 thousandths behind the edge. Not screaming thin or anything like that, uh, but they slice pretty well because it's still a very thin blade stock. They're not the sliciest things in the world, but pretty good. Nothing to complain about. Also, I've been using this for a month now. I've been carrying the snot out of it. There's also a thing that's nothing to complain about is that Aus 10A steel, guys. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. I know it says Aus on it, so people are thinking like Aus 8. It performs a lot better than any Aus 8 that I've seen. Also, these are made, Demco said himself on one of my shows, they're made in the same factory that Cold Steel's are. Cold Steel does an amazing job in heat treatment on almost everything. And this is no exception. I have a couple other cold steels in the Aus 10A. It's always held up well. I did dull this enough that I had to actually sharpen it. I just put it on the work sharp precision sharpener. Uh, nothing too crazy, but sharpened right up. Still looks good. I didn't even bother to try and put a mirror edge on it or anything like that. But it sharpened right up again. And not too difficult. And the edge retention was more than acceptable. I wouldn't put it at quite maybe like an S35VN level, but it ain't that far off as far as the edge retention goes. It's pretty darn good. I, I'm pretty impressed with it. I really do like it a lot. Um, another thing I like about these, especially on the clip point, is that it does have a very piercing tip if you need to be piercing stuff. stuff. This this is a great... It's, they call it a clip point. It's a pretty... I'd call that like a mild clip point. I don't know what else to call it, but it's it's almost kind of a drop point. So it's a much more conventional blade shape. Um, I really do like the shark's foot, as they call it, though, which is just kind of a, you know, modified sheep's foot, I guess. Uh, but I think it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. I just like the look of it. And for my kind of task, this sort of blade shape, you know, works just fine. But I think the blade on it's been great. I think it's one of the highlights of it. Like I said, it's not a... Um, it's not a completely, you know, slicing machine, but it's it's more than good enough. And I like it's a for a thin blade stock, it's still pretty robust. Still, even on the shark's foot, still it's still very robust all the way to the tip. You're not gonna worry about snapping the tip off. For being such a thin, slim knife, it's a it's a pretty tough one. As far as the ergos go, excellent. I have found myself choking up on it a lot more. There's not like a pronounced choil but there definitely is i do find myself using it more like this obviously if you're stabbing into something you're going to want to go behind that guard because your finger can slide forward but i find in the kind of stuff that i do you know opening boxes stuff like that cutting cardboard i mostly just kind of use it like this um but ergonomically it works fine either way a lot of people say are you going to trigger that shark lock that's a question i've got you know when you've been carrying it no it's you're either back here where you're pushing on the shark lock and making it tougher or if you're choked up, you're really not, not that near where, I don't know how you would do a thing where you would trigger that shark lock. You'd have to, you can move it a little bit if you're like trying, but not enough, no way, not enough to fire it. It would hurt your thumb. You'd feel it more before you would, uh, before you'd unlock it. Uh, as far as the carry goes, let's uh, get this, get out yield, yield Levi's, put it in the pocket. Now you will see between the clip point and the shark's foot. The clip point's slightly slimmer in the pocket, but not much. I did kind of compare them, you know, reaching my hand past all that stuff. It's not enough that you really notice. Um, nice thing is the pocket clip does ride right on that logo. I'll show you more when I pull it out here. And it is right hand, left hand. There's another clip for it to be a left hand carry. Um, it, it rides right on this logo instead of riding on this fairly aggressive texture on the grivery. Which, by the way, going back to Ergos, yeah, this thing is locked in your hands. It's It ain't going anywhere. But when you slide it on the pocket, it doesn't feel like... It's definitely not a pocket destroyer. Nothing like that. And that slimness of it, it's just... Uh, it's very easy to forget that it's in your pocket, especially for the... It's obviously not a heavy weight, but the moderate weight of it. Um, yeah, totally disappears in the pocket. Great knife to carry, yeah. You do have a lot sticking out, but not the end of the world. I wouldn't mind seeing a deep carry clip option for it, but uh, not too freaked out. Now, of course, the main thing about this, I already alluded to it, is the action. This shark lock is just so cool. <laughs> it's just, I loved it on my 8020. I like having it even more on a little smaller knife, especially summertime wearing lighter weight clothes. It's nice to have a little slimmer, lighter knife than the big old 8020 is. But um, yeah, as long as you don't fumble it like that, it works perfectly every single time. It's great. I really like it. I like the noise that it makes. It's a very strong lock. 
It's not maybe quite as strong as a triad lock, but Demko said it ain't far off. He designed the, the uh, triad lock as well. And again, depending on how you're holding it, if you're holding it like this and pushing down, you're you're putting you're putting weight on that lock. Same thing with the triad lock. So yeah, you're putting you're putting force on that lock. So yeah, th this thing's gonna hold up absolutely fine. Uh, no worries there. So what are my overall conclusions? My conclusions are is it worth the 150 bucks? I say hell yeah, all day, every day, twice on Sunday. But some people are going to say, I don't like the Grivery. I don't like the Austin A. There's probably nothing I can say to change your mind on that. Uh, the Grivery, which is, you know, their word for fancy plastic. Um, some of this, I don't think most of it you look at it, I don't think you even notice. This is the cool little thing they do around. You know, this kind of faux pivot collar. I think that looks great. The only place that it looks like fancy plastic is that 80-20.5. Uh, maybe they could have done without that. If I have to make one pick, you know, one little nitpick on the scale design, I almost just might have rather this was just plain. But, because that's the only, that, not because it's a bad idea, it's just, or it makes it grip more, it doesn't. But it's just, that's the only place I can see that it looks like fancy plastic. So, there's that but yeah i think it's worth it this shark lock it's a brand new lock design i'm sure it was not cheap to develop i i don't have a problem with that this seems like a fairly pricey lock i have had it apart it's not complicated but you can see the assembly of it is a bit complicated and i, I could kind of get that it's not horrible it's not you know like taking it apart an automatic or anything like that but it does have a spring in it once you get involved in stuff like that, assembly costs are going to go up, things like that. Um, it's not the most inexpensive lock in, ever, you know, created in the history of mankind. So I can kind of get the price. I do totally get the price, honestly. So um, I'm not going to show you the packaging because mine came as these were basically uh, their full production, but the packaging wasn't done yet. So I saw the packaging some people got at Blade Show. It was really nice. Mine is not. <laughs> so I'm just not even going to bother showing it to you. But um, yeah, I think it's worth the price absolutely for sure. For being such a slim, fairly light knife in this size, it's super tough. And I would not hesitate to do nearly anything with this. Um, yeah, I think the 0 0.125 inch blade stock is perfect for it. It's not so super slim. It's not like a 0 0.1 or a 0 0.11. You know, it's got enough, enough girth to it to be fairly tough, but still be slimmer and lighter. And yeah, I love this thing. Definitely probably going to be in my, you know, 100 to $300, you know, knife of the year, uh, candidates. And I think it's going to be for almost everybody who's handled one. I've talked to a lot of other reviewers. I know it seems like it seems like almost every person that attended Blade Show <laughs> bought one of these or two bought both, um, both versions. But yeah, I'm eager to see more versions come out. Um, maybe there'll be more colors. Right now they're only in this gray. Uh, it would be cool to see a few more colors of them. I like the gray. I'd probably stick with it because obviously I spent spent a you know 400 and what, 485 bucks wherever it was on this thing in gray. I chose the gray, so obviously I like the gray. But it would be cool to see, you know, if they did it in a blue or a red or purple. Purple might make me change. Purple might make me buy another one. Uh, I would love to see if they did an American-made version of it. You know, exactly the same, but just USA-made with 20 CV and, and uh, some fancier handles and stuff. That would be really cool. Full Taiwan. Oh, I would turn into a puddle if they did that. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I really love this knife. I know a lot of you do, too, that have bought them. So this was my full review after having this thing for a month. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. I've been Brian. Have a good one.